What's up, Peach Posse? This is Anna. This is Taylor. Welcome to the Naked Peaches Podcast. I love your hair today, Anna. Thank you. It was really greasy, so I had to do a little half up, half down situation, and I'm feeling it. You look so spicy. Thank you. (laughs) You look like a 90s queen. Thank you. How have you been since last week? Good. So I tried, this is actually a two week old update, but I tried one of Melanie's tips and I was like too sleep deprived when we were recording in LA to even remember to talk about this. But when I asked Melanie about like initiating sex and how I have a hard time with that, she made the suggestion that I spend like 20 minutes alone and get myself in the mood, which I was like, it's never occurred to me to do that. Um, But I tried it. And I, I even told Colin, I was like, this is the tip she gave me. So like, you know, I, if I tell you I need like 20 minutes alone, like, you know what it means. Oh. Um, so I like went into my bedroom and I like put on like my pole dancing playlist. I put on like a sexy outfit. I lit a candle. I like, you know, just like did a little dance for myself in the mirror Love. and like, once things went a little further than that, I was like, okay, I'm going to text him. And I was just like, come upstairs and it was great. And did um, he love it? Yeah. I mean, of course he loved it. I was like already excited when he got up there. (laughs) Perfect. And I feel like I felt more into it, like even more into it when we were having sex because I had already kind of like gotten the juices flowing. Um, so I liked that tip. And now whenever he initiates, like he'll start and then he'll be like, do you need 20 minutes alone? (laughs) sometimes I'm like no I don't like I'm fine and then uh, sometimes I do but it's like it's like a nice thing to just like have as an option I love that yeah okay maybe Um, I should try that that sounds like fun you should it was and um I also feel like it gives you you get more out of the outfits the sexy outfits that you own because like usually those outfits come off pretty quickly I feel like so it's (laughs) nice to be like I'm gonna have my moment in this outfit you know I'm gonna like dance in the mirror I'm gonna take a selfie and then like And then I'll take it off in 20 minutes when I'm ready. Yeah. And for the most part, like I like when I buy them, I buy them because I like that. You know, it's like he'll like them no matter what. And so I like, yeah, I want to wear it. I want to just like look at myself wearing it. Exactly. Okay. I also took one of Allison's tips from last week. So Allison was telling us that you need to just walk around and be like, I am so cute. I'm the hottest girl ever. She was telling us about how she tells her boyfriend like, I'm the best girl you'll ever date. Like, how does it feel to be, you know, with the hottest girl ever? So I've just been saying to Colin, like, what does it feel like to have the world's hottest wife? Like, <laughs> it was his reaction. He's like, I mean, I th- I thought he would be like, you're insane, but he's like, it's great. Like, he, <laughs> um, so I don't know if it makes me actually believe that I'm the world's hottest wife, but like. I'm going to keep doing it and see if it has any effect on my confidence. I think it will over time, you know? It's like working out, right? Like one week of working out is not going to do anything. But if you're consistent for a year, like, you know. Yeah, I'll check back with you in a year. Uh, Let us know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so I also have been implementing um, the tips that we got from Melanie. So... I used the one where she was like, if your mind is like out of it when you're like having sex, it's like, that's just a choice. Like you need to just get yourself back into it basically. And so I was like, oh yeah, duh. So I basically have just been doing that. Like we're having sex. If I start thinking about something else, I'm like, stop doing that. And then I just stop. So it's like, I feel like. What do you do to get yourself back in the moment? Do you, are you doing like the breathing that she was talking about? No, but I'm just like, literally like, like, let's say we're having sex and then I start thinking about like, you know, the fact that I need to go grocery shopping tomorrow or like something. Mm -hmm. I'm just like. I'm like, don't think about this right now. Just like be in the moment. Just like Uh think about like what's happening and like how it feels and like kissing or like whatever else. Just like what's actually happening and not like actively thinking about anything basically. Okay. So thinking about how it feels. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It's been great. And I just feel like I. Oh my gosh. I love this for you. And I feel like while I was doing it, it's like after like a a couple times, I just like stopped really like thinking about other things. So I'm like, okay, this is good. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So look at us. Oh my gosh. We're growing. It's for us. (laughs) um okay also one other thing before we bring on our guest recently we had a former podcast guest and avid listener come to us and say that we're being hypocrites because we tell people not to self-tan before their shoot but I obviously self-tan and if you've seen the picture that Anna just posted to me in the garden um I self-tan before shoots so I just want to set the record straight that self-tanning before a shoot is okay you just have to know that like if you don't ever self-tan and it's your first time doing it it might look like shit and so don't do it for the first time ever and if you are like 
you're new to it, you don't feel confident in your self tanning abil- abilities, go to just like an airbrush place. Don't go to Palm Beach Tan and get a yes. booth spray tan. Yes. <laughs> do not, I do not recommend Also those. with the airbrush people, like don't try a new airbrush person right before your shoot. Like go to somebody that you've been going to and you know how it looks on you and then do it before the shoot. Yeah. And also you don't have to be tan. That's only if you feel better when you look tan. Yes. So I just want to set the record straight and we are updating it in our welcome guide so that people won't be confused anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you, Megan. Um, Friend of the pod. <laughs> calling us out. <laughs> we, we have one more story to share, actually. Oh, yeah. So um, so we record these a few days early and today, technically, our episode came out. That was our Disneyland slash Eras Tour recap episode. And Alma, other friend of the pod, texted us um, because she was really um, shooketh by Allison's butt plug story. (laughs) And she had a very terrifying situation, too, where she was going and seeing a GI specialist. um, And they inserted this medieval looking tool. I don't even know (laughs) how else to explain this. It's so scary looking. With it literally looks like something you would use if you were trying to hurt someone, like <laughs> kill them. <laughs> it's so scary. Um, with a pea sized amount of lube, which is not enough lube. And she was just like screaming on the table and crying because it was so painful and horrible. And this should be illegal. Like you should not be allowed to put things up people's butts without a ton of lube. I know. It should be we need to email Joe Biden. <laughs> Like, I'm just even thinking about, like, when I get a pap smear, and the that thing is so lubed up. Like, yeah. whatever they put in me is... So the fact that you're not doing that to someone's butthole... Which like, doesn't have natural doesn't lubricant. Doesn't have any lube, yeah. It's honestly, these people are sadists. It's like, so if bad. you are a GI doctor... And you're listening, let us know if you went into that field because you like causing people pain in their butts. <laughs> yeah, us immediately, and then we're going to send you to jail. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's so bad. I'm so scared yeah, for her. We have to post a picture of that yeah, scary Yeah, we'll post a picture tool. of the tool and then Posse, let us know if you've ever seen that tool before and if it was used on you if you had lube because I, I'm like really scared for all... Like, I just feel like we've heard two very similar stories in a really short amount of time that there has to be so many other people affected by this and I'm it's not I'm scared okay. to ever have a butt issue and yeah. go to one of these fucking doctors. Well, don't you have to start getting like... um I forgot what they're called. Like after 40 or something? I don't know. Um, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. No. no. Like where they go up your... A colonoscopy. You do? I thought like everyone's had to start getting... I'm not doing like, it. Like to check for cancer. <laughs> I'm like, not doing it. <laughs> I, I will not participate. <laughs> we'll find the one doctor that uses lube and we can only go to them and we'll send the whole posse. Yeah, I think if you have it, if you're out there and you have a doctor who's good with the lube, let us know so that we can recommend them send everyone there. Yes, they can come on the pod. They can talk about it. Yes, I love that. Okay, I love this. We should bring our guest on. Yes, we should. Welcome, Rainy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank thanks you for, for joining us. Of course. We're obsessed with you. We're so happy that you're here today. Well, I'm obsessed with both of you, so it's mutual. Everyone on our team is, like, in love with you. Like, I feel like all of our followers, when you when your page got deactivated, we had people DMing us being like, where did she go? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, I'm so touched. <laughs> I know. I felt that. I definitely cried a little bit because I was like, this is so dumb. But it's really tragic. I'm back. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully this page does even better and... I'm glad that people missed me. Yeah, we missed you. We We're so you happy to have you here. Yeah, <laughs> good. good. <laughs> so, okay, how do we describe what Rainy does? You are. I feel like you are multi talented. You are she's a in everything. Woman. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm the jack of all trades, truly. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a postpartum doula, and I also am a full service sex worker. Also, have had past experience like teaching instructing dance courses based around um sensual empowerment and embodiment i used to do burlesque performing performed at festivals for a while too and you know just kind of just have done it all and you're also like the most incredible model oh yeah i forgot that (laughs) in the world i'm a model too (laughs) which i think we should start with that first because we like after the first time working with you, we both like went away from that and we're like, we have never, ever, ever seen anybody move in front yes. of the camera the way that you move. It's no, like, like every movement you make looks one, effortless, 
too beautiful. Like you could stop mid movement, any movement, and it would be a good photo. Like I don't understand oh how it's possible. <laughs> when I watched you step out of the tub and you just put in your little toe, and st- I was just like, what is this? Like I've never seen this before. You're like, truly the most graceful person ever. Oh my ever. gosh, wow. Just like we were like so impressed. And I think we shot for like 40 minutes, which is yeah, like we really fast for us. Yeah, we shoot that long. And got so many photos so and many, so many yeah, And videos. And like, yes. It's just like so, so impressive. Like yeah, the way you. you can like control your body. Yeah. I mean, I feel personally, I mean, I started dancing when I was four. And then I joined a competitive dance team when I was seven. And I started competing and like traveling up until I was 16. So it's like nine years of, you know, really having to pay attention to your body and your relationship to it. And also like being on stage, like, you know, the presence you're supposed to hold. And one of my like biggest comments always when I was dancing was just the energy that I would bring to it that like people would like, I can't not watch you because you just like demand my attention. And then doing like burlesque, I feel like I got to use that so much more, but explore, you know, like more erotic positions, you know, like actually play with my body in a way that wasn't going to be frowned upon, like in the dance realm, you know, I got to pull down my underwear and, you know, take off my top and figure out what my lines and shapes were really. Mm -hmm. And I feel like having that really has kind of set the foundation for my modeling work because now I can just go and just flow through it and I know what feels good and what looks good because I've spent so much time in front of mirrors and uh, up on stage to where like it's just feels natural now yeah like it took a lot of effort to get there but now it is it looks like you were just like born to do this yes yeah like I'm sure I had my awkward like baby deer phases where I was like (laughs) oh and then when I first started doing boudoir too you know I was very shy and super nervous um I think a lot more so about like what people would think but also like you just are so much more exposed you know like and you're you're showing it like you're showing your body and not like you don't necessarily when you model in other forms or in styles but when you're doing boudoir like you're you're really embodied and you're sitting there like this is me yeah and And then when you post the pictures it's like okay I'm saying like look at me yes you know yes yes (laughs) like I did this (laughs) yeah yeah um, but then you like get so desensitized to it yeah. eventually. And then it's like, who cares who's, who's seen my oh, ass? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, in the beginning, it definitely was kind of like, a kind of like pushing the boulder, you know, up the yeah. hill, but it wasn't like, I'm only doing that. There is going to be like a place where I can rest. And like, it's like, oh, all that work was worth it because now it's just so easy. And even if I had to go through the phases where it was like, I don't know if I want to do that or like, I don't really want to do nudity. Like I just barely did my first nude shoot this year. Oh really? Yeah. So when I did the shower shoot, I think that was my second nude shoot I'd ever done. Oh yeah. I had Wait, no, no idea. you were yeah. wearing a, a, oh, like a body suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I went full nude. Remember? I took it off. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. How could I forget? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm the like, iconic come on, I was naked. <laughs> yeah. No, um, you were naked. Yeah. Yeah. But that was my first or my second nude shoot I've wow, ever done. Wow, I feel so honored yeah. that we got to experience it. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was amazing. It was such a wonderful experience, but that took a lot of time to work up to. Yeah. Um, Because that is a whole other level of comfortability, you know, because lingerie still is, it's accentuating everything. And then once you remove it, it's like, oh my gosh, here's my meat suit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems like even with our content and the stuff that we post, like sometimes people will come in for shoots and they obviously have various comfortability levels with how far they want to go with their boudoir photos. But it is interesting to see the line sometimes with people who are like, they'll wear like a really, even like see-through meshy kind of like lingerie, but they're like, no, I absolutely will not do like nudes or like, you know, sheet poses or anything of that yeah. sort. And it's, yeah, it, it's interesting. It's like, there's something like comforting about even a little bit of fabric, mm-hmm. no matter how sheer it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It keeps you like somewhat hidden still, which, you know. It's really nice when you can get to the other side of that because I was like, oh, those are real. Like, they're some of my favorite pictures Aww. and I love looking at them because it's like, wow. I mean, I think at first I always have, you know, some negative thoughts, you know, about myself. And then with time they go away and I'm able to really appreciate them. But like also just appreciating my body and how beautiful bodies are and how they can be in all their different shapes and forms. So, yeah. That makes me so happy. Good. 
good. Yeah. They make me very happy. Good. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that's such a thing. Like my first reaction a lot of the time when I see photos of myself is like immediately I'm picking myself apart and like thinking of the negative things. And then with time, like I start to appreciate the pictures more. And sometimes I have to like take a break and then come back to the gallery and like look through it again. Yeah. And then I can like appreciate it without being like my jowls and all these pictures or whatever it is, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I look through, save my like all time favorites, and then I put it down. And then 24 hours later, I come back and I look again. And then more pictures are appealing to me. And then I do the same thing. And then 24 hours again, I do it again. And I pretty much love every picture at that point. That's such and a good idea. That is a good it idea. Is, it's just nice because something I'm like really working on is instead of viewing like the way I am and my processes as something that's wrong with me, instead viewing them as as a part of me and just like, oh, how can I do things then that work with me instead of creating this mindset that's like, no, I need to get to the point where I look at every single picture and they're like, banger, banger, banger. Um, And maybe I just need the time to let those like insecurities and judgments fall away slowly. Um, And because it takes myself three days about, then why don't I give myself three days to look at my pictures and like appreciate them more and more. And it works really, really well. And yeah. And like, of course there'll be like the pictures where it's like, it's just not a good angle or whatever. And I'm like, not that stoked. But for the most part, it's about 90% of the photos I will love. Yeah. Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. That's actually a really good tip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, I want to go back to the dancing stuff a little bit just because I, for one, don't have an extensive dance background. Yeah. But when I look at you pose, I'm like, I want to get near, near that level. I will never get to that level, but near that level. So what is something that like just everyday average people can do if they just want to get better at some of that more like graceful, elegant posing, but don't have this amazing dance background that you have? Yeah. Um, so something I would do a lot in my classes, my classes would be structured around choreography I'd put together, but the point of it wasn't for them to master the choreography for them to look like replicas of me, but to find that movement within themselves and their own comfort level with it. So we did a lot of like modifications for people. um, But like if someone felt like rolling their head with a position um, or flicking their hair or, you know, touching their leg, um, I would super encourage that because it's what their body naturally wants to do. And it's a movement that feels good for them. But we would sit in front of the mirror and just do this like slow flow of movement, which literally could just be posing and just do that while watching ourselves. And so something I do and like have done for shoots is I, you know, I have a playlist, I put it on, I will put on some lingerie or you could just wear bra and underwear, you could just wear pajamas, like it doesn't really matter, whatever you feel comfortable in. And I just get in front of a mirror and I just kind of like slowly move. And I, maybe I try poses I've seen people do, Um, But the point of it is for me to watch my body, you know, and um, practice different angles of my face, you know, like where, where does this angle really flatter my neck and my jawline, you know, if I move it too low, then you lose my neck, you know, things like that. But really just like before a shoot, kind of like, you know, practicing for it, practicing your faces, you know, do, can I like do the smiles? Can I do like the look back? Like what faces do I feel like I really have dialed down and what faces like? don't look so good like I really love like licking poses you're uh, so good at it <laughs> you, yeah, yeah I have spent hours in front of the mirror <laughs> licking my hand and my fingers because you don't know and like you know like some people like bite your lip in a shoe you can't just go bite your lip no. because not everyone looks good when they bite their lip <laughs> or and, their finger <laughs> yes or know how because yeah, it's yeah. if you bite all of your lip you're gonna like show some of your gum and then it looks weird if you mm-hmm. bite like too little it's not gonna really show it's you know it's a whole thing it's it's really comes down to practicing um and making the space for that yeah and just like in a non-judgmental space like you're not if I don't hit a pose I don't hit a pose but I can find ways in which I can modify it for my body that would bring me close to that pose Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. um just like working with yourself and what you have maybe when I'm doing my 20 minutes prep I can just be posing to myself in front of the mirror the whole time exactly absolutely (laughs) yeah I mean and I mean, I'll do that even like for dance stuff too, just getting a nice little warm up, just like watching myself dance, you know, or I've always really been able to get myself going like creatively, sexually too, 
by imagining myself dancing for someone. Mm. Um, and it can even be for yourself. And it can be for someone that, like, you love or care for or it can be someone completely imaginary. It could be, like, a crowd of people. But just, like, having that performance aspect can, like, really – that just, like, really helps me a lot. I love that. Yeah, I, are good I feel like maybe it's, like, a side effect of growing up dancing, but I feel like that's a thing for me too. Like, yeah. at, like – it's not even that I want to be performing for a real crowd, but just the idea of yeah. this is a performance and someone is watching me and getting something out of it is like, it makes it like more fun. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. There is like, you know, exhibitionism and loving to yeah. be watched. But like my favorite part about performing was the adrenaline rush I'd get before going on stage. And what I love about burlesque is how there's just like such a fluid relationship between the performer and the audience because the audience needs to be engaged. Mm -hmm. Um, The point of them like whooping and hollering is to, you know, boost up the performer so that they do take off something or like some burlesque performers won't even fully strip if the audience isn't engaged and like yelling because the point of it is for you to want more and to communicate that. And that's what directly kind of fuels that energy too. Mm -hmm. This makes me really want to see a burlesque show. Oh my gosh, yes. There's some really good ones here. What are your favorites? The one I last went to that I really loved is called Dapperlesque. And it's at the Alberta Theater. And it's a gender-bending burlesque experience. Oh my gosh, And it is so fun. All shapes and sizes. Just so many different acts as well. And it's just like all super creative and some like really silly stuff. But I really, really liked that one. That sounds so fun. Yeah. And also like empowering too. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I love like when I go somewhere and I see someone who's like really confident and they're like not the stereotypical whatever. Like I feel like it's empowering to me, you yeah. know? And so like seeing a show like that, it's like a domino effect of confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Um and just to see the wide expression of of sexuality and what that can look like and you know some people are wearing like strap-ons and like fake tits you know like the little I don't know what they like the best things yes 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 (laughs) just like all of these things you know um you know changing between like a dress and a suit you know there's just like all of these variables that I think create um just like a lot more texture I would say to the performance you know um because I mean obviously it's amazing to watch like hot beautiful women do their thing and get it and it's cool to see how that can be applied to so many more people yes um because I do find the inclusivity to be very important but lacking in a lot of burlesque communities. Mm-hmm. We yeah. should go together. That'd be fun. Yeah. For research for the podcast. I mean, yes. <laughs> podcast also, I just feel like like creatively, it would be so fun to just go see this and get like inspired yes. and even like poses, like yeah. anything. Oh, yeah. And just what they come up with too is so incredible that you're just like, yeah, I left feeling inspired. I was like, I want to put together another burlesque piece. Like I miss it. Yeah. So. We would definitely come to yours. Oh, yeah, we would. Thank you. <laughs> We'd sit in the front row. We would yes. be hollering for you. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Showering you with dollar bills. Yes. Oh my goodness. A dream. <laughs> my pole studio did a showcase at Dante's um, a few months ago. And it was really fun because it's like the strip club is cool, but it's like it's a different dynamic than someone who's actually putting on like a fully choreographed act, you know? Mm -hmm. And so with this showcase, everybody had their own act and their own theme and a costume. And it was kind of similar to that. And there was one performer who did like a gender bending one where they were kind of going from like a more masculine vibe in their dance to like a more feminine one. And it was like, it was so fun. And so it'd be fun to like see more of that. Yeah. I have another question for you about growing up dancing. Yes. What was your experience with your body image like oh. growing up as a dancer? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, my body was always – there was, like, a point when I was, like, a twig, like, probably when I was, like, seven. But then after that, like, you know, I always had, like, more muscular thighs and legs. Um, definitely got told a lot, like, you know, having – not necessarily directly, definitely in ballet that, you know, I needed to, like – work out more or dance more yeah um I didn't stick with ballet for long but it was kind of a message I got a lot was you know about my body needing to be smaller and I'd be so confused because you know I'm dancing with all these like petite 
other people and you know I look at them and they're just getting more petite and toned and like I've got thunder thighs that are gonna like crush someone's skull and I'm like oh okay well I don't really know how I'm supposed to change this yeah once I left kind of more traditionally structured dancing um that's when I think I felt the most connected to dancing because not only was I dancing in the way that someone wanted me to but I was not having this hyper fixation on what my body looked like and what it needed to be to be a dancer. And I think that is also something that's clearly lacking, you know, is the body yeah. inclusivity within the dancing world. Um, that you have to look a certain way to move or to be flexible, which is just not true at all. Yeah. And is definitely another factor of what pushed me into burlesque of wanting to find a dance form that I could feel more acceptance around my body and you know like now I would absolutely take a dance class and not feel that way but when you're on a team where you're competing where you know you're training four days a week you have and, the biggest ass out of everyone yes and you've got a <laughs> deadline you know all these things it's like yeah they care what you look like they want you to look a certain way yeah um and you absolutely get judged for that in competitions you know like totally. competitions were so brutal the way that just tear you apart yeah uh yeah it's weird like older judges telling like young kids like that outfit's not flattering on oh, you yeah. that'll be like part of the critique oh it's yeah it's just crazy <laughs> yeah I mean and even if you have like a wardrobe malfunction competing you are not allowed to fix it so like if you like you a child your you know leotard snaps and half of your chest is exposed, you will get docked points if you fix your outfit. You have to continue on with the performance, even if you get injured. Like, you got to keep going. My, I yeah. dislocated a knee during uh, our last, like, competition. Oh, my God. And I just had to crawl to my next <laughs> position. Because I, like, I was like, I have to finish the dance. I yeah, can't just, yeah. like, walk off the floor. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's brutal. Yeah. It's cutthroat, really. Gymnastics like that, too. They're so psychotic with, like, I feel so bad forgetting her name right now, but she was, like, that one really, really famous gymnast who, like, was at the Olympics and, like, I think broke her ankle straight up, but then, like, had to finish her vault routine, basically, and, like, re-vaulted on one foot and oh my got, like, a medal. Like, she meddled in it, but, like, fell to the floor as soon as she landed that vault because, like, her foot was broken. She yeah. literally was, like, oh vaulted again on a broken foot. I'm like, I don't even understand. And it's, like, and it's, like, you're an Olympian at that point. It's, yeah. like, go. Like, yeah. you show exactly. must go on. Like, yeah. No yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's that or never. Yeah. Like, really. And yeah. that's how it is, like, the competition, too. You don't get to come back and do it. It's, like, yeah. well you flopped yeah and you don't get a trophy now so yeah. go home yeah. you know and you just traveled to a whole other state for this and paid all this money to even get in to the competition i don't even know what the right word is i guess alternative forms of dance are like yeah. definitely more body positive i had that yeah. experience with pole for sure yes where it was like that kind of made me love dancing again yeah. after like leaving it behind when i was younger and feeling like this is like too hard on my self-esteem <laughs> yes yeah I mean the dancing world in yeah the way it's like set up and just kind of targeted towards you know specifically like little girls definitely is there's so much control about it and it's kind of strange whenever I think about it a lot yeah um, <laughs> but I loved that yeah about pole too when I first took some classes was just like oh this is so great. Like, I even, you know, like, I went, like, I think little booty shorts and, like, a sports bra. And they're like, you can come in, like, an underwear, like, underwear and a top. And I'm yeah. like, wait, what? And I was like, oh, my gosh, okay. I got to think about it. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's, like, people in thongs of all sizes. Yes. You know, it's so, like, it's so nice to see. Yes. Yeah. And then once I kind of, that was, like, my first class. And then once I got a little more comfortable, I was like, okay, let's go. Like, yeah. <laughs> Now I've got no issue seeing everyone else and it just, yeah, it, it's, it feels like such a safe space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing that we wanted to ask is if someone wanted to sign up for doing like movement lessons with you, is yeah. that something that you're currently offering? Yeah. Um, so I'm about to actually move and I, I mean, I have a studio space right now in my house. It's just, it's not up to my standards personally, so I don't like dancing in there as much. Um, but my new spot has hardwood floors, and that's kind of what I need. And so once I get moved and settled, I'm going to have a nice little studio space, and I'll definitely be, like, accepting, like, little private probably only max like two people groups like I also will come to people too and like do group classes I absolutely would I love doing movement stuff it's definitely one of my favorite things yeah yeah 
Um, we definitely need to take a class. Yes. yes, I would love that. And it just like can look so many different ways. Sometimes I come up with choreography and like we put it together. And then sometimes it's like, do you know how to do like an improv flow? and something just super basic and a lot of times it's no for people because improv is very difficult Mm -hmm. but we start you know with like our eyes closed and laying on the floor and then you know how can you discover your relationship to the floor and with movement you know how can you explore that with your hand with your fingers um, with your feet can you roll side to side and then slowly piecing it together um but it's just supposed to be an intimate experience of coming into your body and discovering what type of movement feels good for you because I don't really like pushing the idea that we all have to move in the same way because that's just so boring Mm -hmm. but I'm definitely looking forward to like in my new space offering more little private classes like that yeah I would yeah I would love to send clients to you too like especially ones that have video shoots coming up and like Mm -hmm. add on for video because it's (gasps) I know it's like it's so helpful to just learn how to move like we do a little bit of it when they first come in but I think having like even an hour lesson or something before a video shoot. It's hard to squeeze it into a shoot when it's like you're asking someone to be really vulnerable already doing a boudoir Mm -hmm. session and then being like, okay, now rub your hands along your body. Like, and like they just feel really awkward, you know, they're kind of moving through it really quickly because it's uncomfortable. And so I think it'd be so nice to give them like a little bit of instruction. Yeah. Yeah, I would love that so much. Just some of the most, I just had some of the most amazing dance sessions with people where you know I see them finally perform and I'm like almost in tears because I'm like you did that and like at certain points they're like I don't think I can do that and I'm like you can do that because you did it and we're gonna just keep doing it one of like the biggest pieces I think of like movement art for me that I value is slowness because fast movements are very alluring and attractive but there's a there's something so different between moving quickly and moving slowly. But when you slow down, like you're letting people just see you and just like feel your body. Mm-hmm. Like what what does your chest feel like in your hands? What does your collarbone feel like? Like feel that, pay attention to it. Be in that moment, you know? It makes me happy to see people being able to like arrive in their bodies more and just being able to be present in ways they wouldn't have been able to I mean it's so hard to like be in that space like when you think about it um like if you go up to like dance in front of a bunch of people it's easy to just be like boom 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 compared to like slowly touching your leg and making eye contact with everyone you know like that's more vulnerable yes it is Mm -hmm. even in um my like last burlesque piece I did a sad one which was probably one of my favorite ones I did and it was to a really really sad song cellophane by FKA Twigs yeah Yeah. did it to that and my whole like concept was I mean it was definitely very personal but like I dressed very much like a showgirl you know because it's like why didn't I do it for you so just trying to be like up and like you know done up as much as possible wearing like a glitzed out like rhinestone g-string and everything and I had like my clear pleasers on you know but then taking it all off um and I'd have moments where I'd do something really really fast and then I'd go into something that was like so slowed down and the crowd would go wild at the slow moments always like they would lose it every single time because I would go through, you know, some pirouettes or something and then I would just stop and do like a very slow like back bend and people would just be dying because there was just this moment for them to savor, to savor and to be with you and they're not constantly tracking your movements. Instead, they're able to like just be there with you in that moment, you mm-hmm. know, and witness you in your entirety. That sounds incredible. Yeah. I want to watch you perform. I know. I want to watch you <laughs> yeah. perform so I can bad show now. you the video of it afterwards. Yes, please. please. Yeah, because it's, it's definitely one of my favorite performances. I worked so hard on it. And I'm pretty sure I cried really hard when I was done because it just yeah. felt like such a success. I was like, you know what? I would love to straddle the emotions of like lust and anguish. Like, I was like, I want people to be so confused that they're, like, hard and crying at the same time and might even use their tears as lube. Like, I want absolute chaos, but in the most beautiful way. Yes. I can't wait to watch this video. Yeah. Yay, I can't wait to show you. In my choreography classes, I I always told them, I was like, we're going to do this choreography and I don't want you to look just like me. Like the point, and I think that's like the hardest part, you know, is like you see videos on TikTok or, you know, Instagram reels or wherever, 
And it's all dancing in a specific way. You know, it all looks, a lot of it looks copy and paste, like in a traditional sense, you know, or if you see what like looks sexy and what's not conveyed to people. I mean, and a lot of the people end up being like, you know, able-bodied and thin. And so, you know, you're not seeing, you know, the diversity in people's bodies and expression, but, you know, what's not conveyed is that that movement feels comfortable in that person's body and that you can find movement that feels comfortable in your body and doesn't have to look like that and it's still going to be sexy like you can find your own way to do those things without the idea that it has to look like this you know slinky person that's doing this epic move that it's like that looks yeah it's hot it's amazing but like you your body has its own natural movement too that's gonna look slinky and sexy too Mm -hmm. i'm having so many ideas right now of like we could do a retreat of discovering (laughs) your body sexual sensual slinky movements like we've been dying to do a retreat and like this (laughs) i feel like yeah having like a movement component like would pair so perfectly with like the photos because yes yeah oh absolutely like even having a setup too where it's like I don't know, whatever happens in the morning and then there is like a movement time and then like everyone gets ready and then goes to it. I feel like that prep would just be game changing for people yes, because yeah. they'd have, it's arriving in your body, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's what's hard for people is like you're yeah. sitting in this and there's not the opportunity to be like, okay, bye. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> you've got to be in it yeah, because it looks a lot different if you're just mindlessly going through something to where you're like intentionally moving your arm, you know, like, Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a lot more vulnerable. So it makes sense why everyone just wants to be like, peace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, this is sort of related to some of the questions we've been asking, but like separate from posing, can you, do you have any advice that you can give people who are listening for like getting more in touch with their bodies? Not necessarily like, doing movements that look good but I just and maybe I'm making an assumption here but I feel like when I watch you pose it looks like you're really in touch with your body the way you talk about it it seems like you are so am I right in thinking that yeah (laughs) Yeah. I mean I've done so much personal work to be in my body I spent probably like up till I was 25 I was so deeply dissociated and I mean and I still could dance and like it looked beautiful but like moving slow was hard for me like my first burlesque performance I moved so fast like my teacher was constantly telling me to slow down and it was so difficult for me because I didn't want to slow down mm-hmm. I didn't want I didn't want people to see me and so that was something I really really worked on but just like walking just breathing you know like trying to find moments of mindfulness when I can dial into my body and just like feel it um even like before bed you know touching my body um what does it feel like um doesn't have to be like in a sexual way and then just like looking at my body in the mirror and you know I'm not always just like sitting there like oh my gosh I love my body so much but just witnessing it um just like looking at it and trying not to have any judgment good or bad, just kind of being completely neutral and just taking in my body. And I feel like doing a lot of that has really helped. And also just really breaking out of mindsets and binaries of what my body is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. And kind of coming back to that thing of, you know, like just recognizing how I am and like who I am instead of thinking there's something wrong with me. The same with my body and, you know, same of being like, well, I'm probably never going to be a petite 120 pound person. And if I was, people would be concerned and kind of developing an acceptance around that. So instead of constantly viewing my body as something to change, viewing it as something to embrace, something to like explore and something to, you know, embody in Mm -hmm. more ways than I have. I like that a lot. And I feel like those are like very like, we could do that today, you yes. know? That's, yeah. like, very practical advice. Yes. I mean, some of, like, the dance classes I've taken even that were the most, like, profound for me were just, like, the most simple, like, delicate movements of just, like, your hands, you know, and your fingers and, like, being aware of it. And, you know, like, even now it's, like, how does my heel feel on resting on this chair? Yeah. Instead of just, like, oh, I'm just sitting here. But, like, actually being able to... Um, bring your presence to places in your body that otherwise you might not notice. 
Yeah. So and yeah. not like ignoring how things. Feel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It just kind of gives you a lens. Like if I'm modeling, I can tell. Like I'll put, I'll try something and I can tell if it's kind of awkward with my body because I can feel like a strain and I don't like doing poses where I'm straining because I don't think it looks good. That is interesting, especially just like paying attention to those small details because in photography too, a lot of times those small details can like make or break a photo where we'll have someone in a pose maybe sometimes, but then like, then I'm like looking at everything. I'm like, oh wait, like unclench your fists, you know, or like they're sitting yeah, there yeah. like <laughs> grasping their hands and like, okay, like just like place your hands on top of each other, dainty yes. fingers, like just relax. Yes. And it's like that little thing that makes a world of difference. Yeah, absolutely. But it's like little things like that, you know, that you just kind of have to like, you know, your body is your your tools. Your It's your medium you're using in the art form of modeling. I have spent so much time looking in the mirror already. It's going to be scary how much time <laughs> I spent looking in the mirror after this. It's great. I mean, like, why not revel in your own beauty? Like, yeah, we're here yeah. to exist in these meat suits so it's like why not just like enjoy the way that they look let's appreciate it yes it's like i did not i did not come here just to like hate the one thing that's going to carry me around and like to harbor so much hatred and only feel acceptance if i change it because that just feels like such a waste when it's like or i could just embrace it and learn to love it and just say fuck you to everyone else that doesn't think it looks the way it should, you know? Well, you're definitely an inspiration to me because I feel like I always try to find people to, like, follow and kind of who are, like, very, like, good at modeling or really confident in their bodies who are, like, have thicker thighs and, like, have some of those things that, like, I struggle with with my own body. And I feel like I look at you and I'm like, oh, my God, she's so hot. She's so confident. And so... You're inspiring to me. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) Yeah. When we were in um, Oysterville doing that, like, that photo shoot in the gardens, um, (laughs) Taylor immediately, like, it was, it was pretty soon after we had done your shoot at the studio. Okay, yeah. And Taylor was modeling at one point, and she started doing these, like, really cool, like, arch poses with her hands. She's like, I'm channeling Rainy right now. I'm like, I can tell, and it looks so good. (laughs) It was. It was. And they were really good photos. Like, they looked great. Yes. I love that. (laughs) Yes. But while she was talking about faces, I was going to compliment you because you are really good at doing really subtle movements with your faces and like moving your hands really subtly to change the shot just a little bit and make them all look good. Thank you. It's because all that looking in the mirror, but I'm still not there yet. I still hate my face a lot of the time. So I'm still working on that. That's why I got to keep telling Colin he has the hottest wife yes. in the world. So yes. I can start to believe Absolutely. it. <laughs> I mean, I definitely have some days where I'm like, I am a goblin. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> or like, like I said, sometimes I look at pictures and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm, I model? Who am I kidding? Like, what? And then I go back and look and I'm like, no, never mind. I'm hot. Yeah. 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 You know, I did notice though. So Allison sent us some photos that she took on her film camera when we were at Disneyland. Yeah. And those are one just some of the cutest photos they're completely just like random little photos yeah and I was like looking at it I'm like why do I love these photos so much like I'm not even making fun and I'm like you know what it is it's the fact that it's just like basically just like that little bit of grainy film filter on it and I'm not picking myself apart and like I was like I need to just only take photos like this from now on and like only grain like (laughs) grain and just like I don't know it's like it's not healthy though to look at yourself through our cameras on a regular basis without edits because it's also not realistic like it's not real like I know like when I am taking a photo of somebody versus if I'm just in the studio with them working with them Later when I'm editing that photo and I'm zoomed in retouching it, like that is not how I'm looking at their face no. when I'm with them in person, no. you know? And I like, know the same be for myself. Editing, and you'll be like, I didn't even know that person had acne until I zoomed in on their face. Exactly, yes. exactly. And it's like, and I know that, but then I still will see one of myself and I'm like, no, I'm the goblin. Like I am terrified. <laughs> yeah. What is that? You know? And then I'm like, no, 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 you have to stop. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's kind of like a, I don't know if there's like ever really a true winning point, cause, you know, just the way like high, how high tech cameras are and everything it's like they're gonna pick up on all of those things yeah no one's eyes are that dialed in to yeah they're like oh i can see your eye wrinkles <laughs> also it's like we all have eye wrinkles yeah so it's just like, like part of like, having a body yes <laughs> yeah you're like how dare i age <laughs> yeah, right. well when i was editing your photos from our first shoot that we did we did video and like you can't retouch video the same way you can retouch photos and i'm like looking at the video and i'm like I didn't realize she had any acne on her butt. And then I realized it was because you were wearing that pearl dress and it had put indents oh, in your butt. I but also, it was like, I didn't see it in real life. Like I it did also not have register. heat-induced hives and I was in the hot tub. 
So I think those are actually my heat induced highs. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, just, <laughs> I, I know when I got the video, I was like, no, <laughs> my highs. Yeah, it's been a real struggle because um, certain fabrics really make them pop off. I No, they're gone now. I had them this morning, um, but I get them. Yeah, hot tubs. Yeah. I'm covered, sauna covered. <laughs> when I work out, I'm usually covered. You can kind of still see them a little bit, but I'm usually, yeah, covered. And then I'll have flare ups like head to toe. I'm covered in hives, but those were my hives. Yeah. Well, um, I didn't even notice them in real life. Like I did oh, not see so them good. until I was looking at the oh, camera. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So I yeah. feel like that's just an example of how yes. like in the camera you yes. see things that are just not even registering to yes. the naked yeah. eye. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. Yeah. Because you're also seeing like the whole person and their mannerisms and whatever they're saying. It's like, it's everything when you're in person yeah. with someone, but a photo, it's like just that one tiny snapshot of just this one thing and, Yes. It's not healthy, you yeah. guys. Yeah, you can, like, zoom in a lot. Like, you can <laughs> yeah. zoom in on things that you're like, I didn't even know I had that. I didn't yeah. even know that existed. <laughs> yeah. Or that people could notice that. And it's like, no one actually can. Nobody. Yeah. No one's really up in your grill like that, ever. Yeah. yeah. And no one has zoomed in on this patch. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. I feel like we've talked about modeling and posing a lot, but there's, like, so much yeah. more to you yeah. and, like, can, to yeah. what we want to talk about. Yeah. Well, okay, we were kind of talking about this a little bit earlier, but yeah. you are so booked and busy with, like, you are posting content constantly. Yeah. Um, it seems like you're literally doing a photo shoot every single day, yes. but then you also have, like, your doula work, and I'm yes. just like, how are you managing everything? Because it seems like a lot all the time. Uh, it is a lot. I did take, like, a little break in kind of, like, July, because... June was a really busy month for me with my doula work. And then I just realized, like, creatively, I was just kind of burnt out. Um, and so this month, I've kind of, like, it's kind of, like, backlog people I decided to work with, you know, and then just kind of being like, okay, now I am available to shoot. And just I've been having to kind of, like, push people later on, which, you know, it's fine. I've always wanted to, like, have a solid balance between that and with dance as well, which dance has kind of fallen to the back burner right now. And I do know that once I get my space dialed in, I'm going to be dancing so much because it'll be my first time living alone and it's going to be like my whole like own space and I'll just like have that level of privacy, which to me makes such a big difference to have. Living alone is the best. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's it's going to be really cool. I think my cat will be really happy too because he's a little anxious. <laughs> so since my main income is doula work, I prioritize my clients. And so I schedule them, usually have my schedule a bit in advance mm -hmm. if I'm already established with the client. If they're waiting to have their baby, it's kind of like I'm just waiting and I have to kind of hold that space for them. And then I book shoots around that. But okay. like, you know, sometimes it's like I work till 6 a.m. I take a nap until whenever sometimes I can sleep until like 1 30 sometimes it's like 10 30 and I'm like let's go oh my yeah God. <laughs> I know I do get to nap during my shifts so oh good once baby's older and we get in a flow then I usually have like I'd say like at least a three hour nap I get but I usually don't rest more than that and or sometimes I'll do like two hour and a half little naps mm -hmm. um but then I'll like be shooting at 2 p.m so it's like I gotta like get up and get ready and then I go I definitely don't have as many brain cells for those shoots, but um, I make it work. Um, and then I usually have that night off so I can like sleep 10 hours is yeah. usually what I do. And it's, then when do you make content for like your only yeah. fans and your Playboy? Okay, so that <laughs> is probably something I need to work on. But usually like after a shoot when I'm already like kind of done up because then it's easy. I'm just like... The makeup's done, the hair's done, the vibe's there. Or if I have, like, some days off and I know I have, like, a little lull, I'll go and do that. Um, and I try to make all my customs in one day just so that it's done, I can send them out, and then, like, next week it will be, like, the next available day that I have. But sometimes I'm really bad at that, and then I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's right, you wanted this. Um, so that's, like, the one thing I'm trying to work on. Yeah. Doing it after a photo shoot, though, is kind of the easiest. Or before a photo shoot. Yeah, that seems like the perfect time. Cause yeah. Because you're, like, in the flow already. Yeah, and for a while, honestly, most of my, like, content and stuff on, like, my Playboy was all, like, right before I went to bed. So I had, like, no makeup on. I was, like, in my jammies. But people loved it. They were yeah. just like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is such a vibe. Like, you're just, like, no makeup, hair up, you know, 
jammies on, oversized t-shirt, and I'm like, yeah, well. Well, I feel like that's that gives people that, like, intimate look, yes. you know, yeah. into your, your like, life, and it exactly. feels probably more personal. Yeah, there's a good balance of the both, where, like, they want me to be super dolled up and, like, wear a lingerie outfit, and then... A lot of times they're like, I don't really care. I just want to see your butthole. So, you know. <laughs> That's like every man in the world, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Actually, I, the, I'm really curious about this. Yes. Whenever we have someone who's like a sex worker that does like OnlyFans or anything like that, I'm yeah. always really curious. Like, what are the majority of your requests for? Oh, well, I mean, I do a lot of people want to watch me get fucked and that's kind of why I started an OnlyFans because you can't post partnered content to Playboy it's against community oh, okay. guidelines I was just gonna okay. ask you what is like the difference because yes. I didn't even know this Playboy thing existed until I saw your link and then I was like oh this looks just like OnlyFans is, yes. is it basically just like OnlyFans it is so okay. Playboy started like an app and it was Playboy Centerfold and it was gonna be a completely separate app and it was just gonna be basically like OnlyFans but a lot of their recommendations are that like everything on your profile that is visible is safe for work and then the locked stuff is not safe for work. Obviously you can do whatever. A lot of people are just like doing like, I don't really know. I've looked at different people's and I'm like, okay, that's not what I'm doing. But they're like, oh, this is me and some laundry. Come see more of me. And I'm like, watch me squirt. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but you can't, it's against community guidelines to post partnered content. And I started getting a lot of requests for that. And so, and then I started filming with people. So I felt like OnlyFans would be a good option. And I also have so many people that have wanted me to be on OnlyFans. So like, I think I've only, I haven't even had it for a week and I already have like over 40 subscribers. And wow. Wait, you just got OnlyFans? I just barely started mine. Oh, I wow. literally I just a yeah, few I days ago. I okay. Know yeah. And like, wow. already made like three hundred dollars, and I wow. was like, oh. okay, we love to see. Yeah, it. I know. I was like, oh, okay. I guess so, you guys were just waiting for yeah. me. Yeah. So, did you originally build your following on Instagram then? Yeah. So okay. with my first account, which that account was already, it, I feel like it's kind of bittersweet that it got shut down mm-hmm. because I got really, really shadow banned back in like twenty twenty, okay. and like I maybe was having like under 100 people view my stories and I had that account for eight years and it took me so long just to get 4,000 followers and so then like there were just so many issues with it already and it just kind of felt like a hit or miss and so then with this new page I just didn't I just made it a personal page I didn't make it a creator page and like none of my posts have been flagged and I'm already over a thousand followers so I was like I feel like that other page was just doomed. It was cursed. Yeah. From the get go. That is Um, really interesting. I was telling Anna the other day that I have never had the word boudoir in my personal Instagram bio. And the other day I added it and immediately five posts were flagged. And so I deleted it out of my bio. Those posts are still fucking flagged. But I just feel like there's certain things yep. that just like trigger Instagram and then yes. they never let go. No. They're always like in their no. grip after yes. that. <laughs> Especially like you cannot say link in bio. No. You cannot say <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. You can say link in bio. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, but you can't, like you have to do all these things and it's better to not like have a direct link to like OnlyFans. Like you should always do like the like little sticker attachment yeah. with different words mm-hmm. and there's just like all of these things and then even certain hashtags too and like there it's it's like it's not a platform that's easy to navigate at all yeah. and obviously is super strict on censorship yeah it's it's a struggle but it is. i do think i got most of my following like on my playboy and only fans definitely pretty much everyone's from my instagram okay i would assume this is um, interesting. Maybe I need to start a new account because I am I am also deeply, deeply shadow banned. Yeah. Um, to the point where even like people that follow me are like, I can't like find you to message you because yeah. they have to fully type out my name to <laughs> message me. Uh, and, and you have like, a long name. I have a long name. Yes. And it's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Some of my posts do really well. Some of them are like, whatever, but I'm still like in the beginning stages. And I also am at the point where I just kind of don't care. Yeah. But even when I have like 3,000 followers or something, I would only get like 115 likes on a post and I'd maybe get like 100 people watching my stories. And now it's like most days I have pretty much 200 to like over 300 people watching my stories. So it's like, thank you. Yeah. And but a fraction def- of the followers. So that's, yes. yeah, that's yeah. so yeah. interesting. Yeah. So I do think not having like a business profile on Instagram is probably the move because I think once you have a business profile, they... Well, they're looking at how you're making money 
And if you're making money off of Instagram, but using it as like a marketing tool to make money elsewhere, they're going to like be on top of your stuff. I posted a set today and my, I'm fully like nude and my butt's out and nothing. That's crazy. (laughs) It's just, just dandy. Like that's it. Whereas like I posted those pics we did in a, in the leotard in the studio and those got flagged. My butt in a leotard got yeah, flat. Of course, of course <laughs> like, it did. Yeah. It didn't matter because I yeah. had people being like, well, maybe you need to censor your stuff more. And I was like, okay, well, first of all, shh. But second of all, I'm getting flagged for like everything. I'm yeah. getting flagged for being in a swimsuit. You know, it's it's not like I'm sitting there spreading my cheeks. Yeah. I'm just I'm pretty fully clothed. Yeah. I have um, thought before that it would be an interesting experiment to try getting a new phone with a like a burner phone basically Mm -hmm. start an instagram from that phone so that instagram has no idea that it's connected to your old one yeah and then you know you can get rid of the burner phone log into it from your your regular phone but that way like when you start the account it's not connected to any of your old ones and then see like how that would do as that's i don't know i feel like anna if you start a new account you should try that yeah yeah or use a a completely new email yeah don't use the email that you used for your other account that is smart yeah my new account unfortunately i think i forgot and i kept my same email and i was like oh my god no how did i forget (laughs) that um which it's doing fine but it's like it's better to just have a completely different email just blank slate yeah i think you should just like experiment i know i might yeah i might um okay sorry we were talking about custom content though yes yes so continue we sidetracked. Um, <laughs> so you, you were going to OnlyFans because more it's that's more right, That's there. right. Yes. So basically, I mean, it still has – people still have their qualms with OnlyFans. It's not super easy to – I mean, if both parties who make content are on OnlyFans, then you can tag them and post that stuff. If not, they need to sign a release form and confirm that that's them in the video and that they consent to you posting the video, which isn't like that bad – it's just like a little bit more work. Mm-hmm. And I've heard that there's just like a lot of kind of hoops to jump through with OnlyFans. I haven't posted any partnered content yet like just because the person I filmed with, their OnlyFans hasn't been approved yet. So there's kind of pros and cons, you know, to each. But I'm just doing a free page on OnlyFans and my Playboy is a subscription based. Okay. So my subscribers on Playboy will get the better deal out of everyone because they're paying a monthly fee. So they get like a free video once a month and they get um, discounts on customs and they get like certain videos sent to them that won't be posted to my page. Followers on my Playboy, they kind of get the shit end of the stick. Like they pay the most because they're not subscribing. And then OnlyFans is kind of like about the same, maybe a little bit better than my followers of what they get, um, just price point, just because I didn't want to lose my subscribers on Playboy for OnlyFans. But I mean, like, if that happened, it's it's fine. But, you know, it's like a whole thing. You have to, like, calculate yeah. the rates. And then, you know, you learn really quickly. You're like, oh, I'm going to make every post 20 to $30 and only, like, one person buys it. And then you're like, okay, let me put this post for eight dollars and then you make a hundred dollars off of it so it's like you gotta you gotta do a lot of like testing yeah figure it out when i was like briefly considering starting an OnlyFans, i did a bunch of research and i was like honestly the math alone makes me not want to do it because it seems so complicated of like okay you're charging this much but then you need to like post stuff for them to just like see but then you also need to post stuff that they're paying it's like a lot of it's a lot you're constantly strategizing yes and like yes thinking about like okay what's the next way i can get people to buy something yes because that's what you make money off of not the subscription fee yeah yeah Yeah. most of it is going to be them purchasing content um you can charge people to message you which i have for followers on my playboy but i think or my subscribers get like a discounted rate and then it's free on OnlyFans. which right now i'm just kind of experimenting i'm just trying to see what works but Everyone wants it for free. Everyone wants it for cheap. And they'll be like, well, I can go to Chatterbait and pay someone $5.50 for, you know, whatever. 
and you're like, okay, I'll then like, go there. Yeah. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. Like, it's not me. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Like, cool. I'm not charging like an absurd amount. Yeah. yeah. And it's pretty reasonable. Yeah. And you're asking for me to do this whole thing for you. So, yeah. 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 Damn. But, oh, yeah. So then what types of customs? So, yeah, people wanting to watch me get fucked. Uh, lots of people want to see my butthole. Like, really, people just Specifically really... the hole. Yes. Like, Interesting. Yeah. Like, I do actually... they want to see any... Like, do they want to see, like, a butt plug, or they just want to see your, like, butthole? Um, I get... I do get requests for, like, butt plugs. Yeah. Um, they just also really like to see my butthole. I have one client who pays me to watch me try to fart. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> I love that. Which is really funny because I'm not, I'm not a very gassy person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I burp a lot, but I'm not like just farting around. Do you eat like a lot of beans before you film for them? Well, no, this is, this was like a new thing, you know, okay. cause he's like, I just really want to watch you fart. He really wants to sniff my ass. Like yeah. that's really what he wants to do is like, I was like, do you want me to like fart in your face? And he's like, no, I just want to sniff your ass. So I was like, okay. But I wasn't like prepared and I was like, I'm not really gassy. He's like, it's okay. Just try. So I just basically just. We did a little, like, video chat, and I just tried to fart. Never farted. <laughs> and he, like, came in, like, two minutes. So I was like, well, I mean, you paid for five. You want anything else? He was like, no, I'm good. I was like, okay, well, have a good day. <laughs> Love that. So, wow. you know, some you get, like, some random requests. I did get my first pair of panties purchased. Yeah, but a lot of it ends up just being, like, masturbation content. Yeah, um, that's what I feel like when we were talking to another um, content creator that we've worked with, she was saying that's, like, the yes. vast majority of her yeah. mm-hmm. is, like, jack-off instructions. Yes, yes. Yeah. I've done some of those. And, yeah, and then, like, when I get people who want in-person sessions, a lot of them want to be domed and want me to peg them. Which I do. Oh my god, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I think of pegging, I think of that Broad City episode. Have you seen yes. <laughs> She washes the dildo and he's like, Do you it. know what kind of dildo this is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Iconic. It's it's really a uh, wonderful experience. I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> I have never pegged anybody, but I just feel like it would be very um like you just feel like a boss if yeah, you're pegged, I feel like right? Yeah, like, I haven't either, but I feel like it would make me feel like such a bad bitch. Right. Oh like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's something about being in control and just like I love making men be my little bitches. Like yeah. just like, oh okay. We got this. <laughs> we got this. Yeah. So yeah, that's kinda like mashup of it all but that's tends to be the more common stuff yeah yeah get like a few weird things here and there but i think the farting yeah, is the my farting. favorite yeah, yeah that's yeah. iconic that this man is he's very interesting he's definitely like some fecal matter stuff too <laughs> so uh yeah <laughs> which i said no to you know yeah. i considered it <laughs> And then I was like, mm, I don't know. I feel like there's going to be trauma attached to that, like having to deal. Yeah. The know, aftermath. The, the aftermath of it. Yeah. Like, that's going to be seared into my brain. Like, yeah. I'm going to yeah. be, that's going to be on replay. Like, I'm never going to look at the bathroom the same. I'm just going to be like, yeah. That's where I did that. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. where that happened. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like I'm really impressed with, like, all the different things you're doing and, like, all of the. Yeah. Like, doing it all. Like, navigating all of it, balancing, like. Because it's, it's a lot of different things, and it's, like, yeah. they're all tiring, and so... Yeah, like, and I just yeah. feel like you're, like, living your best life, and it's just very... We love to see it. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I'm trying. I'm yeah. trying. I'm doing my best. It, it is a lot to juggle. And, you know, it's I think part of it, too, is being able to have the awareness of, like, okay, I need to tap out for a bit, or, you know, I need to take a rest. Mm-hmm. I need to reschedule shoots. But... I'm not really scared to cancel on people at the end of the day. And that's good. I am going to reschedule. Um, but like things happen. Mental health gets crappy. And like sometimes you just need time to recharge. And I don't like showing up for a shoot not being ready. Yeah. Um, that just feels like a waste of my time and the photographer's time. And so I'd rather just, you know, take the L. And if they're cool and like are okay with rescheduling, then we'll do it. And if not, then I'm like, okay, well probably wasn't going to work out anyway. So yeah. doing my best. Yeah. It's probably nice that you're in some ways are doing so many things because if you do need a break from one of them, you can just like ramp down on that and then ramp up on the other things you're doing, you know? Yeah. So yeah, you can find like the balance probably a lot easier than someone who has just like one job. Yeah. It's nice having my energy kind of go in different places. All of my main income does come from doula work, which, mm-hmm. you know, that's totally fine. It fully supports me and I love it. Um, and it makes 
modeling and like dancing and like sex work is you know supplemental income but even that like a lot more enjoyable to know like my livelihood is not dependent on this Mm -hmm. which I'm very like grateful and you know privileged to experience it in that way and yeah it just makes it all something that yeah I feel like I can enjoy a lot more because there's not this pressure to monetize everything I do I really don't like that about like modern society about how everything has to be like this money grab like oh like are you monetized like how much money are you getting for that how much money are you getting for this and I'm like you know what at the end of the day most of my modeling stuff it's like TFP um I do a lot of collabs with amazing photographers and other models I'll I pay a lot of photographers too because I'm seeking out specific work and that's just how it works in my brain and Mm -hmm. sometimes I get paid too and but at the end of the day I don't want my modeling to be built on this foundation of you know am I getting the bag or not because I'm making money in other ways and I just want to enjoy modeling for what it is and it's like kind of my creative outlet yeah and if you were like only taking modeling jobs that like paid a lot of money you'd just be like modeling for like jc penny you exactly know? like and that's just not going to be as creatively fulfilling no no i'm like can i bring my ball gag yeah <laughs> like yeah. absolutely not this is yeah. a family picture <laughs> like i want to do a sexy tea party at yeah park, you yeah know? like yeah. can we do that yeah the creative expression too especially um just not having like any limits and i know for a while with dance i did try to have it be my main and only source of income and i hated dancing when i did that i yeah. didn't want to do it because I was doing something that other people wanted me to do. And it just was, it wasn't fun at all. They weren't performances I enjoyed. I, you know, did it and then left and was like, oh my God, that felt horrible. Like, I want to go because I want to be there and I want to like show this to people. And if I get tips, I get tips and that's fun. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm paid to like do me, you know, to show up and be myself, that's something I would do. But I feel at a really good place with it. Yeah. I really like that because we like, we always are planning like creative shoots that we're doing like every month there's at least a couple that are happening and a lot of times we will get like burnt out and then we'll get overwhelmed we're like hey next month like don't schedule anything but then it's also hard because like those are also the shoots that really fuel us and like we like we are tired because we're like you know working on everything else that we're doing but it's like we almost need those shoots to like keep going because it's like it's just so fun and different and like you said it's like they might not be like we might be losing money because we're like you know buying stuff for them and we're just setting up a set for fun because we want to but at the end of the day it's like you can't monetize everything and it's like sometimes you just need to do it for yourself yeah (laughs) absolutely yeah and then also like gives you an idea too like oh my gosh I could do this again and like now you know how or like Mm -hmm. even taking the idea and creating like a similar one to it that you want to recreate elsewhere I just don't care to monetize everything yeah yeah I think I'm I think I'm good yeah Yeah. um I have one more doula question for you um so earlier you were talking about how like most of the doula stuff that you're doing is like it's after like it's like scheduled it's like after they've given birth and stuff so can you talk a little bit more about that because I until I was like researching doulas and had my baby I didn't even know that like after you had the baby doulaing was even a thing. I like, I just thought it was for birth. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, um, I mean, there's full spectrum doulas, there's bereavement doulas, there's death doulas, abortion doulas, birth and labor doulas, um, and then postpartum doulas. And so that's what I do. I had no idea yeah. about all those yes. other ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. There's, I mean, even like sexuality doulas, there's disability doulas, like, Essentially, a doula is a support person, a hired support person who has training and education uh, around the topic. And you're, I mean, the main purpose of my work is reshifting the focus from baby onto parents, you know. And like I always remind my clients, that's like, I'm like, I'm not like, you know, F you to the baby, but I'm like, <laughs> you're going to be fine. Like, the baby is going to be fine. Everyone is concerned about baby. Everyone's asking about baby, but who's asking about you? who's taking care of you. And so that essentially, yeah, is the basis of my job. I do a lot of like postpartum planning with families, you know, which is something that is given so much thought in other cultures and traditions. Like, you know, there's the first 40 days, which is very popular, like especially in Japan. And you are in bed for 40 days. You do not leave bed. All meals are brought to you. Like you can get up and go to the bathroom. You're having bonding time with baby, but the whole purpose of it is for you to rest because after you give birth you have a plate size wound in your uterus from your placenta like that's a plate size wound in your body you know and people are like I gotta bounce back I gotta get up and moving 
you know, and I'm there to be like, absolutely not, because <laughs> you want to move and you're going to be so much better off if you give yourself like six weeks to just rest. Most people have a very hard time resting. They have a really hard time just being still. I think that's just an issue with our society. So I'll bring up like the 555 rule or the 777 rule, which is, you know, five days in bed, five days around bed, five days around the house. And so the purpose of that is to kind of give a structure for rest to limit how much exertion you're giving because you're burning so many calories when you're nursing, but also just the healing process. And also you're having to shed all the hormones you were carrying. You are carrying all this extra water weight. Your organs literally have to reshift in your body. Yeah. <laughs> If you have a tear, that's a whole other thing. Like pooping is terrifying. Even going like pee, you know, it hurts. It's just this whole experience that I feel gets so looked over. So, you know, a lot of my clients are like, I don't even know what a postpartum plan is. Uh, what is that? And so we get to sit down, you know, like, do you have meal support? Do we need to get a meal train? You know, who are your support people? And I tell them it can't be their partner. Like you have to have a support network outside of your partner because your partner needs their own support network. And you two are not going to be able to support each other when you're sleep deprived, you're hormonal, and you've got this dependent tiny little human who needs both of you. You know, you need outside support systems. I do a lot of like prep around relationships, you know, like I guess introducing the mindset that you are becoming a parent, like you are never going to be the person you were before this baby because you weren't a parent then and you are now a parent and you will never not be a parent. Like birth is a moment, postpartum is forever. And so, you know, how is that going to change you and your relationship with your partner and to your family and to the world, you know, that's going to change essentially. And we talk about intimacy, you know, how can you explore intimacy outside of penetrative sex if that's the, you know, the type of sex that you're having? Um, how can you reintroduce romance without putting pressure on your partner to have penetrative sex, you know, before they're ready? And just having just really honest conversations with people about that, preparing them for the ins and outs because it does get so difficult and there are moments when it feels really impossible to connect with your partner and you know if you're sleep deprived and you're hungry and your nipples are cracked and bleeding and your vulva is super swollen you've got a tear and you're wearing a diaper and like you're scared to poop and like you know your boobs are leaking like you're just like you're you're feeling like a hot mess and yeah. you, you need like my at least a part of my purpose as a doulist to try to re-implement the idea of a village so that you know that those people have that support system to fall back on I'll like help them set up a postpartum nest so we'll go up to their room and I'll like assess the space and you know if they're getting a cesarean making sure that there are no stairs involved and if there are then we make a postpartum nest where there are no stairs so like first level floor, you know, making sure they have like a nursing car, you know, what are things that would be comfortable for them to have? Just like all like the little things really that takes care of them because everyone has all the recommendations for like a baby crib or a bassinet or what butt butter to use and yeah. like <laughs> all of these things. But, you know, people will be like, they don't even know what a postpartum diaper is or a peri bottle. They're like, what's that? And you're like, well, we're going to learn today. <laughs> So yeah, it's like a lot of that, a lot of asking what their concerns are, what their worries are, where they feel they need the more the most help. Um, just like really getting to know them as people mm -hmm. and seeing them and creating that trust between us so that in moments when things get rough or if there are mood disorders involved, that like there is that comfortability between us that I can let them know that I'm picking up on something, you know, and get them that help. But also even without the mood disorders, just being able to hold space for them in the moments when, you know, it feels really difficult. Um, and all the times I've had parents, you know, just cry to me because it is really hard or they feel really alone or there's feelings of regret even. Um, and just being able to just be with them in that and remind them that, you know, they're doing a wonderful job, but also that it's totally normal to feel that way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to look at them like they're this bad parent I'm gonna look at them like they're an amazing parent because they could voice something that so many people can't so yeah that's really what so much of it looks like um, I do a lot of overnight support so usually 
parents are sleeping and I stay with baby all night um, and clean the house, do like a full reset. So when family comes downstairs, they're just like, don't have to empty the dishwasher. Oh I don't God. have to prep <laughs> bottles or sanitize them. Laundry yeah. is folded. I get to be present with my baby or babies and with myself. Like I'm not going to be feel bombarded by all of these little tasks that are adding to my stress levels. They're just completely taken care of and gone. Yeah. That sounds incredible. Wow. Yeah. I will be hiring you when I yeah. have a baby. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Does this yeah. make you wish you'd had a postpartum doula? Yeah, I mean, it... <laughs> Yeah, I feel like everyone needs this. This yeah. sounds so nice. Yeah. Honestly, even now I'm like, I need a postpartum doula now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I put no, I have no age restrictions for my care. A lot of postpartum doulas will. But like I said, I believe postpartum is forever. Um, I had a client reach out to me after her baby was one. Um, and she's actually about to be a second time client now because she's Aww. pregnant again. But care really does drop off for parents around the six month mark it's like people just are like oh the baby's six months they're good but it's like this is just the beginning like mm-hmm. this, yeah. I feel like you know babies are babies up until really they're like four or five you know I don't that's just a part of being a baby you know is infanthood um or toddlerhood and infanthood too but um yeah. there's just such a lack of care for them and showing up for people in that space and being able to show up for them properly everyone has their own ideas of how they should and sometimes it just makes it so much worse well I feel like it's I mean just from what I've seen not as a mom but I feel like it seems like when you have a baby everybody wants to come over and hold your baby but nobody wants to come over and clean your house or like (laughs) make you dinner Yeah. (laughs) yeah I actually that's something I do as well with during prenatals as we talk about you are not hosting and people that come over are not guests. They are helpers. You know, there are no visitors coming over. They are coming to help. And mm-hmm. so what's a list of, list of tasks we can post to the door? And it says, hey, if you are coming inside, we ask that you complete one of these tasks. And then when I you're done, that. you can hold baby. You know, but it's like baby does not need to be seeing people at two weeks old. Like baby doesn't <laughs> yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, baby can barely <laughs> even open their eyes at this point. And you have these two grown humans who you know so deeply that desperately need your help, you know, like make, bring them a meal, you know, clean some bottles for them, do a load of laundry, uh, you know, help organize baby stuff, give them time to go take a shower, or take a nap, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so much of it is this expectation that you're supposed to host. And I really just try to remind my clients that that's not what they're doing and that they get to tell people no, like it's their postpartum. And they don't owe anyone anything. Mm -hmm. And if people don't want to show up for them to be a part of the village, then they don't have to. And they can see baby when baby's like, I don't know, whenever they, whenever the parents decide, but like, you're not obligated to show your baby to anyone, especially if they're not going to help you in the midst of one of the most, I would say, challenging experiences that we could ever have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, I mean, you know, it varies. It's a lot of boundary setting. Not everyone's comfortable with it. Yeah. I talked to a lot of mother-in-laws a lot of like grandparents, <laughs> I bet. Uh, you know, having to be like, oh, that looks so cozy and we can't put a fuzzy blanket on baby while they're sleeping because they will die, <laughs> you know, but it's okay. You didn't know. And now we know, you know, like yeah. removing it or like, oh, you took a nap with baby on the couch. That's actually not the best place to take a nap with baby. Why don't we explore some other ways you can like snuggle and bond or what to do if you get sleepy with baby that are still going to be safe. You end up showing up for a lot more than just the parents. There's a lot of people to hold in the process. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking as you were talking about like the diaper and the plate size wound, I was like, what did people do back in like caveman times when they had babies and there were no diapers or anything? And then you start talking about the village and I was like, oh yeah, they had like, they lived in villages. (laughs) Yeah. And like herbs, like, you know, packing herbs up there and like using compresses, you know, all of these things, you know, the person was probably fully taken care of while baby was with, you know, other people in the village and the community, people who are already um, lactating were able to feed baby you know like you're in this trusted network of people who care about you as a person but in our society specifically we absolutely just want to discard parents and how many clients at the six week checkup you know like come back and like I'm like did they they didn't ask you about like any of this stuff like in like the mood screening too for disorders like it's it's 
It's embarrassing. It is. It's nothing. It's <laughs> yeah, like, it's nothing. how are you feeling? Good? Okay, great. Great. Well, yeah, if you want to go fuck, you can too. And you're like, um, what? Like, yeah. I barely can, like, it's so, no, like, that's not, you want a penis up there already? <laughs> like, yeah. I just pushed a baby out. Yeah. And you're talking about a penis up there? It's crazy because, like, when you are pregnant, you're going to the doctor all the fucking time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you give birth and they're like, see ya. Because yes. <laughs> the baby. Because they're, and yep. even yeah. those appointments are, like, way more concerned about the baby than they are about the yes. mom. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Nothing has made me want to, I mean, I know I joke about being a cult leader all the time, but, like, I <laughs> actually, <laughs> I actually want to, like, like, after having a baby, I'm like, I wish I lived on, like, a commune with families and other, Absolutely. like, little kids. Just so, like, the kids could just all be together <laughs> doing stuff and the parents could be, like, helping each other. And, like, yes. it just makes so much more sense. And granted, like, I'm introverted. Like, I need my space. But, like, we have the communal area to, like, do these Absolutely. together. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, in situations where I've worked with families, they don't, you know, they don't necessarily have that type of, like, commune necessarily. Yeah, yeah. But the clients where they are surrounded in a friend group by other parents who are so ready to help them, uh, I notice a much more successful level of support in their postpartum journey compared to like when you have a lot of friends that are single um, and they don't know what that necessarily means in the shift of their you know friendship with this person who is now a parent who now has this dependent human but yeah, everything going into pregnancy, it's all baby centric. It's all baby mm-hmm. focused. Like you'll hear people say like, well, as long as baby's fine, you know, and like birthing parent has like a third degree tear and like is having latching issues and is already feeling like they're a failure, you know, like all of these things. And but baby's fine. So that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's like no wonder postpartum depression is just so bad in our country and just postpartum mood disorders just seem like they have been on the rise, especially in the last few years. Yeah, let's make sad. a let's make a naked peach um, commune, please. Yes, for people to move to, please. and we can just you know have movement classes and do photo shoots, and all the little kids can play with each other. Yes. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, share resources and meals and all the things. Yes. Yeah. Seriously, I read this book a few a few months ago where. <laughs> This woman lived on a, like, a women's compound. Um, Like, it was all just, like, people who... This isn't a true story. Um, But I just sounded like the most idyllic place on earth, you know? I love that. I mean, imagine, like, the Taylor Swift concert, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Girls, gays, and theys. That's it. Yeah. (laughs) You know? It'd probably be such a supportive place. Feeding each other, vibing. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Well, and then you run into, like, the issue with, like, specifically cishet couples of, you know, the birthing parent realizing how difficult it is having a baby with a cishet man who also is being, wants to be treated like a baby, who also wants to be taken care of, who also doesn't pull their weight around the house. So then not only are you having to recover and heal and repair and provide for this baby, but you're also supposed to provide for your husband. Um, And, you know, and like you hear all these stories, like people on TikTok will like nonchalant talk about dumb things their husband did during labor. And I'm like, that's incom. That's like that's weaponized incompetence, first of all, because your husband cannot be that dumb. But like, also, like dump him. Dump also him. get a yeah. divorce. Like, yeah, get a yeah. divorce because <laughs> your husband should not. What was this TikTok? He brought her um, a bowl to throw up in because she's like, I'm gonna throw up, and he brought her a doggy bowl, the doggy bowl where the Stop. food goes. Stop. Yeah. And then after labor or something like that, they asked her if she like had something to eat. Because, like, she was going to need to get her blood sugar up right away before they could bring her food. And she had a, she's like, yeah, I brought some granola bars. Or I brought a granola bar. And she was eating it. And her husband's like, can I have half of that? <gasps> Stop. Yeah. And then, no. like, you know, she, makes, she made a TikTok after basically, like, justifying all of his things that he did. And I was like, you can't justify that shit. No. Like, you cannot no. justify that. And luckily, all my clients have had such amazing and, like, supportive partners who go above and beyond but, like, de- when I nannied, I definitely saw a, a lot of dads basically be like, well, my wife just needs to get back to her old life. And I was like, oh, my God. There's no <laughs> old life. I hate that. Yeah. This is, this is it. This is it, buddy. You've got a child <sighs> now. So like, <laughs> you got to take care of yourself. Or they're like, what's for dinner? And it's like, she's been 
feeding this baby with her body all day and you have the audacity to ask what's yeah. for dinner dude i cannot I can't, yeah. <laughs> also like i just remember when i was breastfeeding especially in the first like while maybe like six months i was just constantly so fucking hungry yes so it's like not only are you it's like if someone's turning to you being like you make dinner and you're already starving anyway and you're getting hangry and it's just like it is horrible on so many levels yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 acceptable no well i believe the ca- I might mess this up. I can't remember if it's in pregnancy or, I mean, I know it's within both. Like how many calories you're burning. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's like, I think it's like equivalent to something of like doing a marathon or something that like close to like every day, because you really are, you're producing so much. You have to eat so frequently, drink so much water. Like you're not just eating for yourself. You're eating for a whole other human. Yeah. In both pregnancy and afterwards. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, now we're thoroughly depressed in some ways, but... <laughs> it's okay. We're going to start our commune. We're going to start the commune. And- yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, and now you know that postpartum doulas exist. Yes. And, you know, there are people that are just so excited to support people in their journeys. Yeah. It doesn't have to be so hard. No. Like, you don't have to be alone. And I, you know, I provide, like, a sliding scale. I also do a lot of pro bono shifts. Um especially if I have enough paying clients, that's kind of my goal is just to always have a little handful of pro bono shifts I can give to families who are either like in an emergency crisis or like I had a client and um, something happened in her family and she was not sleeping and I could tell it was impacting her. And so I was like, free overnight, like I'm coming over and you're sleeping. Like I'm not going to have you go downhill from this experience when I can remedy this. And it doesn't matter because... I will, work will come, like, Mm -hmm. yeah, um, we heard that from Amanda too, our, our other doula that we had on the pod, and she, it seems like all doulas are able to offer something if you just, like, talk to them and see if you can make it work. Yes, yeah, absolutely, and I'm sure there's, like, some doulas where maybe they don't have as much wiggle room, Mm -hmm. just depending, but doula work in itself is community work, you know, and, I personally could not turn someone away at such a desperate point of need. Like I had a client um, and it was just one pro bono overnight, but uh, the parent had postpartum psychosis and had to be hospitalized and wasn't allowed to be around baby alone. And so I gave, you know, it was like just basically this like, they sent a call out to our collective and we're just like, please, we need help. Like if anyone can offer shifts and I was just like, I'm there, like, Let's give them, like, the reprieve that they need. And it was just amazing. Like, it's very rewarding. Yeah. And just being able to see, just them come back to themselves, you know, and what a difference that makes. And just to know that, I mean, that's really what's needed to, specifically for a lot of mood disorders specifically, is people need sleep. That's usually at the basis of it, is sleep deprivation will worsen all of those things. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Like, stress and not sleeping enough are, like, the worst things Right. For everything. <laughs> right. Right. Like I always imagine myself if I've had like a depressive episode or something or I'm at a very low and I'm not sleeping well and I have this high need from something. It doesn't even have to be someone, but something in my life. And I just am like, I'm done, you know, and then imagine that for like two weeks, you know, every single night. It's so scary. And it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like that you shouldn't even be allowed to drive when yeah. you're like at that point. Wow. You're putting, I feel like you're, you're doing so much for so many different like groups of people at the same time, you know, cause like you're helping all these parents, you're, <laughs> you're helping these dudes who want to get pegged. Yes. Yeah. You're, <laughs> dudes you're, that want to see people fart, yep. which I'm sure they probably have to dig around a little bit to find people that are, you know, like willing oh, to try to sure, fart for them. For sure. So yeah. it's like, yeah. 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 You're helping people feel more confident. Yeah. And, like you're just... Wow, you're really... You're doing it all. Well, thank you. An American treasure. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Or a national treasure. A national treasure, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do our obsessions. Let's do it. Okay. Um, mine, you're not really going to be that into this week, but it's heirloom tomato season right now, oh, and I love tomatoes. One. I know, Taylor, no. sorry. <laughs> but I love them. I have been buying them every day, eating them in every way. It's... Oh. 
it's the best. I I just I love I love tomatoes, but I especially love them in season because yes. when you get like the January tomato, no. it's just no. <laughs> yeah, they're it's like kind of mushy inside because I haven't. Yeah. yeah, they're just not as good. Yeah. No. Also, like it makes me sad that you don't like tomatoes just because I feel like you've eaten them probably in a lot of like bad tomatoes and in bad ways and like that makes me sad because tomatoes like done well are like so good yes and i like i grew up eating just a lot of like like a traditional bulgarian salad is really similar to like a greek salad with like tomatoes and cucumbers and like feta cheese and it's like covered in like vinegar and olive oil and salt and like parsley it's just it's like so flavorful and good yeah and like it just yeah it makes me sad for you i'm just (laughs) sorry it's okay i have a lot of other things in life that bring me lots of joy and makes it taste really good (laughs) no colin and i actually went to negotiant the other day and he got the blt and he was like this is the best blt i've ever had and he had me try a bite of it and like i will try tomatoes like once a year you know just Mm -hmm. to see if it's changed and i just it's like i i honestly think i have like a gene or something that like it triggers my gag reflex when i eat tomatoes wow like my body just it just rejects it immediately you know but like cooked ones you eat right yeah yeah it's the texture of a raw tomato it just is something like a switch flips in me and yeah. my body's like, no, yeah. we are not eating this. The really fine salsa. Can you eat that? Like restaurant salsa? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just like it's the just slimy, the, the texture of... gooey. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. My obsession this week is the <laughs> the cinnamon roll at Shoe Fly Bakery. I don't know if we've ever talked about it on the podcast. Oh my God. <laughs> spend a whole pot episode talking about the cinnamon roll it's so good it's a vegan cinnamon roll and so i think one of the reasons i like it so much is that it doesn't have that like nasty cream cheese t- to mm, me cream yeah. cheese is nasty yeah. warm cream cheese again gross yeah it's just like it's like sweet and it tastes buttery it tastes it's not buttery. buttery but it tastes buttery and you wouldn't if if somebody put it in front of me and didn't tell me the ingredients i would full-on believe it was like butter all, all butter yeah wow yeah and you would never know vegan. Mm-hmm. It's vegan. Wow. yeah it's because shoe fly is like a fully vegan bakery right, right. okay yeah. i've heard yeah. of it yeah so we have a friend who has a studio in that same building and i was at his studio today so i whenever we're there we always stop by the bakery to we see if they have to. cinnamon rolls i got the last one and i had to get it because they're just so good and i realized that like we've been gatekeeping this from the posse so oh those cinnamon rolls so, are so, life yeah. changing. That's good to know. Yeah. I will definitely have to go get but one. Go early because they do sell out they sell really out? fast. Okay, yeah. Okay. Smart. yeah. And I'll it'll be warm that. if you go in the morning. Yes. So oh even yeah, better. oh delicious. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, can it be a t- it can be t- anything? Anything. Anything. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Definitely. My new obsession is. Have you seen what we do in the shadows? No. No. Oh my gosh, it is so good. It's on Hulu. It's basically like The Office, but about vampires. Okay. And it's modern day people (laughs) living, like, it's like modern day and these vampires who are like centuries old. And so they dress in like all like old garb, you know, like live in this like weird looking house. And there's a human familiar who is, his name's Guillermo, and he's like desperate to become a vampire. And so that's why he's still there and he's like been there for like 10 years and then there's an energy vampire and his name's Colin Robbins and he like basically drains people in conversations by being an energy vampire and like his eyes light up and he's like, (laughs) it is so good because they have like interview moments where they get like interviewed, you know, and then like when they'll like look at the camera and stuff, (laughs) it is so funny like absolutely recommend okay it, 10 okay. out of 10 i love the office so yes. i'm really excited about and it's this. Like I'll be even better because like you have like the vampires you got like there's like there's a couple that lives in the house and they're like super kinky and weird and then like the other guy is like his name's nandor the relentless but he's like kind of a pansy in real life you know and so like he doesn't really live up to his name and <laughs> It's, it's just really, really good. Okay. I definitely recommend if you need a show to like binge watch that it's that one. I do need a show. Oh my so God, perfect. Yeah, I will be watching. I Absolutely. I always need something while I'm editing. So this is yes. great. Yeah. yeah. It is the perfect show for all of that. It's oh my God. so wow. good. I you. honestly might even go like, because re- I'm all caught up oh. and I'm like now at the point where they release the new episodes. So I yeah. can wait. I might go back and watch it from the beginning because it's that good. Wow. As you should. Yeah. I mean, The Office is like, one of those shows that you can rewatch over and over yes. again. Mm-hmm. So I can yes. see how, like, a vampire version would be the yes. same way. Yes, and it's, like, almost... Because, like, you know there's parts of The Office that, like, didn't age well. Like, there will yes. be episodes where you're like... 
like they would have gotten canceled if that had come yeah, out yeah. in 2023. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This one though has you're not dealing with that and you're yeah. like, "Oh my, it's just it's so good." Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm excited. No. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much of for course. coming here today. This was amazing. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. I just I I'm, I feel like I learned so much today, but I, know. I really yeah. can't wait to start practicing some of those posing yes. stuff. Yes, I know. Yes. Me too. Um, where can the posse find you if they want to follow you? Um, yeah, follow me on Instagram. It's rainy day two point R A I N E Y D A E two point <laughs> uh, Yeah, that's like the best place, really. Yeah, perfect. All my links are in my bio there, and they can go peruse. Yeah, you you're know. you're allowed to say that on this podcast. Link. Oh, in my okay, bio. okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, people can go, like, if they want to see my butthole, you know, go look at those. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. So, um, you can find us at Naked Peach Boudoir on all the socials and nakedpeachboudoir.com. And you can find the podcast at peach.posse on Instagram and peach posse on TikTok. And you can find me at T Smells. You can find me at Anna McLaughlin Photo. For now. For now. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll get a second account soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye. Bye.